Boom. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't read about it. I've just been talking for the last 15 minutes thinking that the stream was working and it wasn't. <laughs> oh man, we, I tell you, if I, I do nothing else, I, I, I think I, I innovate on technical issues. We, we had a new one last night on the Two and a Half Voyages uh, special with Rob that I just talked about for a really long time, but no one was listening. It was just me being a crazy person talking to myself. Uh, we didn't have a speaker uh, that we could use, that we could listen to Victor. The, the old one, which we used last time there, was broken, and we didn't even notice that it wasn't there until we started the live thing. And uh, that was a new challenge last night. Today, this is the first time ever that I thought the streaming thing was working. I thought I saw the red button, and I was like, boom, and I just turned to facing the screen and seeing the comments and saying hello and talking about all the things that are going on. And I didn't realize that, no, it wasn't actually streaming. I've been keeping you waiting for, <laughs> for 20 minutes. I was five minutes late, but now I'm like 20 minutes late, but I've actually been talking for 15 minutes. <sighs> oh, man. So am I going to talk about all that stuff again that you haven't heard? I guess I'm, let, let's do what I was about to do anyway, which is coming back, say hello to everybody. You'll notice that the comments are back to being white. Um, it's not racial. Um, someone pointed out, it was Foghart from Tokyo Digital Crew, pointed out to me the other day, um, rather than open up the whole video window, you can from the live control panel, which I should have been paying attention to to see that this wasn't streaming when I thought it was. Um, you can actually pop out the comments. Uh, it has to be on this white background if you do it that way, but it means I can make it fit just sort of perfectly. Um, so it actually fits a lot better, so I am doing that at the moment. Ah, so let's see who's here. Anyway, uh, Razo Gub, great to see you. Hey, Robert, old dude, Mata Gaijinka. I was just heaping praise upon your last track, which I will do again. But it's kind of depressing that I said it all and no one was watching. Um, Tatsuji Yoshimura, am I talking about the Tokyo Design Week fire? I didn't know about the Tokyo Design Week. I haven't caught the news today, actually. Was there a fire at Tokyo Design Week? I will have to check that news. I'm not going to talk about it tonight because I don't know about it. Um, in fact, perhaps I will find out about it if I go here. Um, is there anything in the current NHK news? I'm not seeing anything in the news from today. Maybe it hasn't been updated yet. So no, I don't know about that, Tatsuji, but thank you for the heads up. I'll look for that. Uh, Mr. Cordy Chip will uh, late watch. Well, that's a shame, but I guess everybody's late watching this because I'm now repeating the intro. Damn it. Uh, Hemingford Gray, 62. Hello from Milton Keynes indeed. Uh, nice to be uh, watched from Milford Keynes. Um, Milton Keynes, uh, Mata Gajinka, Icarus 18, great to see you as always. We got uh, Hakuchu Midnight, um, be nice to Milton Keynes, Hakuchu Midnight. Uh, who, who else we got in here? Um, okay, the direct causes of uh, fire seem to be sawdust and light bulbs placed too close to each other. Man, I, I, okay, I'm gonna find out later on what that was about. Um, that doesn't sound very good. Uh, Oliver D, good morning to you, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, who else we got in here? Tia, great to see you and uh, great to see you last night. I uh, hope you had a good day out there today. Um, yeah, I was just talking a lot about last night, wasn't I? But uh, Okay, Emily Louis, Emily Louis Maitland, great to see you. I, I'm hoping I'm going to see you along with uh, maybe Tia. You, uh, I don't know if you are eligible, but you should apply. Trust me, because I'm pretty sure some magic could happen that could make sure that you will be able to participate if you sign up for the uh, November 27 creator day that I'm hosting. The information is directly in the link below the video. If you have between 1 and 50,000 subscribers, it is a, a seminar which I will be presenting. I've been invited to present on the secret source and all the sort of secret features, how to get the most out of YouTube features to get your channel on all cylinders, you know, running a, a, as good as it can be on YouTube. That said, what's really magic about it is uh, it's it's not so much listening to this seminar prepared by YouTube, which uh, I am presenting. It's a discussion that happens around each one of the themes that come up, and everyone sharing all the information about what they do, and and I learn from that. And it's really cool the discussions, and that's what we've had. And that was excellent in the past. So I'm very much hoping to see you, Emily Louise Maitland, and uh, and anyone else who can make it. If you even if you're not in Tokyo, if you can make it, it's a great day. It's from 2:15 p.m. I think uh, on November 27th, Sunday. Um, and it should be awesome. Uh, the sign-up information is below, so that is uh, that is good and good to see you, Emily. Who else have we got in here? We got uh, Jim Gates. Good to see you, Jim Gates. Um, who else have we got in here? Uh, and Ko Hoshino, uh, Good to see you. and Wei Gaijin up there. I see as well. I'm not sure I recognise Wei Gaijin or An Atig. 
Um, Jason has lost. Uh, Berenger. Oh, I'm seeing names I, I didn't pick up before. Uh, Nar Naran Ayi, good to see you. Um, oh, man. Every time I see that, I suddenly remember that I still owe you a message back from like weeks ago, which I haven't done. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, Triple J, uh, Jinx's journey. Jinx, great to see you. And uh, yes, I am doing good. Uh, as I mentioned when I was talking to myself, there's Yoshi. Oh, Chris, Kenji. Oh, man, we've got all these people that I just totally somehow skipped. Uh, Elvast. Um, okay, all the cool people are here. I will repeat, Freestyle Fox. Woohoo. Um, Butokusa season is over. Um, the only thing is that we have now switched from, I'm no longer uh, hay feverish, as you can see, so that is awesome. The thing is, we have now switched into the very pleasant uh, autumn or fall, if you're American, and winter in, in Tokyo. Um, that means it's sunny every day, but it's also very, very dry, which sounds good, but um, I've got the old uh, kaiski, the humidifier, going, and you need that. I sleep with my mouth open. You'll find this time of year you are waking um, up with a sore throat uh, quite a lot. If you do like I do, and you sleep with your mouth open. Um, it's not a good way to sleep, uh, but it's even worse when you wake up and you can't even talk because your throat's completely dried out and sore. So um, that is something to be careful of. Get a humidifier. If you've just arrived in Tokyo, I, I went through my whole first winter here constantly sick and not understanding why my throat was sore all the time during winter. And that was why. So um, make sure you're doing that. Um, what else was I talking about? I was just talking about how awesome I love my new iPhone. Uh, so uh, here goes got no jack. Uh, I've got no jack on my iPhone 7 and that's right and I really want those Bluetooth I AirPods but they're not uh, they're not back yet oh, they're not out yet and that is frustrating me um, Jason has lost yeah yeah I noticed that your channel is starting to put up some vids so uh, that is indeed why I subscribed and the grand beef uh, hey hey hello back right back at you license to 45 also good to see you uh, daylight saving time okay it's all very confusing when you've got that we don't have that in Japan so that makes things easier I guess at least for us and uh, Miss Hanake, good to see you. Kobe uh, is being very indecisive with the weather, whether it's going to be sweltering or freezing. It was really nice here today. It was like 20 degrees, although it is going to get cooler soon. But sunny, nice weather every day. Um, I hope that's not intended for me. How long until I check into the retirement home? I guess it's going to happen at some point, particularly if I keep thinking I'm streaming when I'm not, because that would just make me uh, ready for the retirement home, if that is the case. I hope that's not about me. Um, so yes, the show last night, um, I'm going to shout that out, on Victor's channel, we did two and a half Oyajis last night with uh, Ron Miller, the second time that we've done that, uh, also uh, a cameo by Tia, uh, who's also there in the comments, um, we did the earlier show just with him and his, uh, how he does consulting and, and helping people for setting up companies, and it turns out people who watch these videos, YouTube commenters, um, with their ideas and, and, and things that they wanted to do for business has got in touch with him, and so last night he, he, he did a second show, which was much more detailed, and it was the two aspects. One, the general principles of starting a business on your own, and, you know, how to get it right, uh, how, how, how to launch successfully. But also with the specifics, how to get a visa so you can run a business in Japan, how to register your, your company in Japan. And he helps with all of that stuff. And he's done it for YouTubers, like people who watch these videos. He's done it for you guys. Um, so he actually, not only did we do another second awesome show talking about all that and getting Tia on, who's actually gotten his help to set up her own business, which is rocking at the moment, but he actually set up an online course, uh, basically outlining all the content of the show last night. And you know, and, and if you want to carry through and actually execute on an idea, he's there to help people. Um, but for a startup, it was actually, I, I learned a lot from it. And I was like the only person on that show last night who runs, doesn't run my own business. So I kind of felt, uh, yeah, that is like really, uh, I kind of felt, uh, I suppose, maybe not envious per se, but I felt like, uh, yes, uh, I should be doing what they're doing. So that was a really cool show. That was a special show last night, and uh, that's why I did the special preview show uh, video for it, uh, which I did entirely using this iPhone 7. The iPhone 7, I originally wasn't so hot on it. I didn't really see much of a difference between it and the iPhone 5 that I was still on. Um, but lately I'm appreciating the fact that one, I can, the stabilization on it is crazy, which means that you can shoot really, really good videos. Um, makes such a big difference actually. The, the, the smaller iPhone 7, the regular one, has the same optical stabilization that the iPhone 6 Plus had. 
Um, so it's like uh, one you can shoot great quality videos and on iMovie I just realized using iCloud I can import my, my SoundCloud music to my Tokyo Digital Crew uh, music uh, all worldly free all there for, for people to use on videos I can import it there and my clips and edit like the video the same as I did it on a PC except I can do it on my mobile phone on the train uh, I can render it faster than it takes to do the editing process is much more efficient than it is on, on the PC what I put in the background music iTunes, uh, you know, the, uh, my iPhone just automatically did all the, the sound leveling and stuff, and it sounded great. Um, so, you know, geez, my phone now is basically much more convenient and powerful for editing fully edited videos for putting on YouTube than my PC is, which has suddenly opened up that I might go back to doing more edited videos if that's the case. Uh, it's also a great way, it's a great excuse to get into, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a way to share more uh, Tokyo Digital Crew music. I did want to uh, put uh, draw attention to the latest track of uh, Mata Gajinka, which I also praised a lot when I thought this was recording, and it wasn't. Uh, her latest track is um, uh, incredible. It's like a '90s ambient track, but it's uh, it's funny seeing these people on, on, in that group and how much they're really extending themselves and making better and better stuff. I was sort of going down that route, and I was making better stuff and using more advanced tools, but I also found that as I was doing more complicated stuff it was also becoming a bit of a barrier back to me because I just don't have the time to sit down and do music for a lot like that and I, I, I was not making music as a result and I've gotten back into making music by going back to simplicity making stuff on Korg and trying to just use that one tool really well because I can work on that faster and just trying to do different styles of music and stuff like that and I've had a lot of fun with that but um, Mata Gajinka is killing it that last track was so good um, so um, yeah you know all that music is there and we're uploading it the whole point of Tokyo Digital Crew is one is that we collaborate we share ideas and we learn from each other how to make better music but the, the main point is is that we make the music shareable so that you guys can use it on your videos it's all there's a f full playlist of all the music it's all downloadable and it's all licensed so that you are protected if you want to use it on your videos you'll never get a claim um, so that was uh, so that was uh, awesome uh, I'm, I'm glancing at the comments, by the way, as I as I as I flip back and forth. Robert Oldude, I'm sorry that you only cried a narrator when you were leaving, but uh, Triple J, Jinx's uh, journey to Japan next summer. One month you'll be in Tokyo. Awesome. Well, you know, you know, check, you know, hook up. Uh, let us know when you're in town uh, because that would be awesome. Rene Heldman, also very good to see you there. Uh, and um, yes, <laughs> so let's get into the, the subjects. Um, Man, I, I there we go. I'm now back up to where I thought I was when I realized that the show wasn't uh, recording, which was a bit of a bummer. But what can I do? So I'm just going to go through as I have recently. I, 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 I've kind of given up just because, again, time. I haven't been able to prepare my um, uh, my magazines like I, I was in the past, but I can still do it based on my Twitter. But doing it based on my Twitter is I will do like it with my magazines. I'm going to skip past a lot of stuff. Uh, just to get you the uh, stuff which I find super interesting. Uh, SKN Kenji, yes indeed, I am, I, uh, most weeks I'm, I, I'm putting these up, although I was definitely too, too much hay fever a few weeks ago to do it. Um, um, it is, I think, you know, the, the current uh, battle for Mosul is the most important like military thing happening anywhere in the world. Uh, it's fascinating you know uh, it's, it's terrible but it's it's also very much the future of what warfare everywhere is going to be like as well um, and it really surprises me that it's not getting more attention this is this is the invasion of a 1.2 million person city um, and it's a terrible situation this is you know really really important stuff and it's, it's surprising there's so little information about it um, China again blocking uh, Taiwan for uh, from uh, international recognition and international police cooperation, which is just stupid. I think on dual displays that I like self-driving race cars. I think that's cool. Wind turbines. Lady Gaga uh, was apparently um, she was featured on a news show tonight on regular Japanese TV, and she decided, like on the original intro, she stood with the other newsreaders wearing the newsreader clothes and did the, uh, the the bowing introduction with everybody else. Lady Gaga there. Uh, yeah, she's a rock star. You know, that's cool uh, that she did that, I thought. Uh, New Zealand got beaten by Ireland this morning, uh, the first time in 111 years, uh, in Chicago. So there seems to be something with Chicago, like, breaking out of all of these curses lately. Uh, the 108 year, of course, the uh, amazing uh, Chicago Cubs win over the um, the Indians uh, happened, but um, 
Yeah, a few days later, in this, you know, in, in Chicago, uh, New Zealand and rugby uh, and Ireland were playing a, a test match, basically for for money raising and spreading rugby to America. And hell, you you Americans, you got the best game of rugby like in the last couple of years, frankly. Um, Ireland played an amazing game and they beat us. And I'm glad that New Zealand got beaten because we played crap for a lot of the game. And, and the thing is, New Zealand is so good that we play crap and we still pull out the win at the very end of all, most of our games. Uh, and, you know, I think it's good for us to lose. I think we need to, you know, actually have, have some painful lessons from our mistakes. And the Irish, they deserved it. They really played such a great game. So a really great game of, uh, of rugby this morning, which I got up early to watch. That was uh, very, very good. Uh, I think at the top, actually, um, how there was a, apparently... There's Kawano uh, Taro Gin. There's a there's a me member of parliament who is a uh, who who set out a directive to stop using Excel as a word processing uh, software tool. Very common in Japan that people put together their word documents. Uh, what we use for word, Japanese will do in Excel. Um, I got converted to the merits of it. Excel is actually a lot more powerful and flexible than Word. You can do a lot of things in it, but of course, if you just um, it, it isn't a word processing software. It's really only Japan that I'm aware of that uses it. I don't know if China and Korea do, do this. Oh, pardon me, but for formatting and for all sorts of reasons, it makes a lot of sense um, to, to use Excel, and it's very popular to do so in Japan. When I first came to Japan, my first job, no one used uh, word, word for anything. Everything was created in, in, in Excel, but it's kind of funny. There was a backlash and a, a, a debate around this about um, not using Excel for everything. Uh, New Zealand milk trying trying to get the uh, dairy exporter Fonterra. That's New Zealand. That's the New Zealand uh, milk and butter company, trying to climb the uh, value chain. Uh, but you know, just let our stuff in here because seriously, the shortages here are crazy. Uh, why does uh, Tears asking a question there? By the way, so, and yes, I'm sorry, I'm not catching all the questions. I know, but keep asking them repeatedly if I don't notice them. So I'm noticing this one. Why does uh, T New Zero do that with Western celebrities? Tom Hanks was uh, doing the same thing a few weeks ago. I didn't know that. And actually, I don't really watch regular. I used to watch all the regular commercial TV, and I just don't anymore. So I'm, I don't know what the story with that is, I'm afraid, to you. But I think it's cool that they do it. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of, it's nice. Anyway, but uh, Cole Hoshino has seen Lady Gaga in Roppongi some years ago. Wow. Uh, so yes, uh, anyway, uh, trying to get the buddy here. Um, are Japan's Love Hotel secretly filming their guests? We ask a former employee. I've heard stories like from the bubble and from, you know, some, uh, particularly in Kansai and stuff like that, that there are some genuinely really dodgy Love Hotels. There used to be Love Hotels which were designed, apparently, I've heard these stories, where you could actually see into the next room. You like, you know, like they'd have all these one-way mirrors um, that were designed so that you could um, perv on people in the next room and be seen by people in another room but not be able to see each other uh the, all, all of these rumors about you know ca cameras being installed and there being all the sort of uh in these porn apparently they do have um cameras installed in the entrance so they can count the number of people coming in the room uh things like that they, they, they do check that sort of thing um talk about tpp i'll talk about tpp there's i've been putting a lot in the um uh, in, in my tweets this week, but to very quickly talk about the TPP, Japan is trying to ratify it, and they're partly trying to ratify it because they're afraid that America, after the election, is going to walk it back, uh, particularly if Trump wins. Um, the TPP, from my perspective, uh, would just actually, uh, case in point, um, there's been unusual rainfall, which has just caused a really bad year for vegetable crops in Japan, which means that the prices of vegetables at the moment, which are already high in winter, are going up three, four times normal prices. So much so that some schools have cancelled school lunches uh, because they don't have the budget to provide them with vegetables. So that's all going back on parents that are actually cancelling uh, cafeteria food based on domestic food prices being out of control because there was too much rain in Nagano and it ruined all the lettuce, for example, or a bunch of different types of vegetables. The whole point of the TPP for me is, is that Japan, you know, we should not be hostage uh, to, you know, food price variations of you know four or five times because of bad weather in one specific region you know there is uh within the tpp region uh you know australia chile america new zealand uh, you know all around the region there are all of these areas which produce all this all these vegetables um you know and it's crazy again to me that a country like japan is is at the mercy of um of weather for you know particularly for urban people 
So I'm glad that we're rushing on it. Um, there's been a drama in Parliament trying to get it passed because the Minister of Agriculture, who does seem like a bit of a dickhead, actually said, although the LDP has such a strong majority in Parliament, technically they don't even have to debate it, they can just ram it through. Uh, he did make a statement saying, uh, we haven't even decided yet, uh, you know, you guys, opposition, we're going to entertain you by, by, by doing the proper consultation process. But we haven't taken a final decision if we're just going to ram this through anyway, whether you like it or not. And that's caused a lot of uh, political noise of people saying that he should resign for saying such an outrageous thing. Because in Japan, even when the government has all the power, they still do this uh, facade, at least, of consultation. Um, it hasn't quite gone as crazy as America, where everything that can be blocked is blocked. Um, there's this facade of cooperation, which was kind of broken for a time. So there's been a lot of noise around, uh, you know, the, the opposition's out trying to delay the entire vote and calling for the Minister of Agriculture to resign over saying this very insensitive comment, which frankly is true. <laughs> um, so it's just a lot of drama anyway. It's, it's the opposition trying to make a lot of noise. But uh, but in the end of the day, everyone understands that, that because uh, both Hillary Clinton and Trump are both saying that they will uh, revise and try to get a better deal with the TPP, um, that they want to get it locked in now uh, before they have a chance to walk it back. Uh, Hillary, I'm pretty sure, is lying. Yeah, I mean, you know, she's lying. That's why. But, but this, in a good way, it's good that she's lying about this because you know the, the, this is an important treaty with Trump. You know, you, uh, who knows? He, he might not be lying, and that is crazy. Barringer, that's right. I'm not talking about PPAP, even though he did release an album this week with 20 tracks on it, including a long version of PPAP. And the song, by getting up to like 19, number number 72 in the US music chart, makes it the most successful Japanese music track to get onto the charts in like 50 years. Uh, also said something about the state of the music charts, I, <laughs> I believe. Uh, and also if you look at what Pico Taro is doing, the cafe, the, you know, he is milking it for everything that it's got. Um, but uh, that is... Uh, yeah, that is what you do in Japan because these bubbles, they don't last uh, very long. Uh, by the way, downside to the TPP, I'm fully aware of, particularly intellectual property rights, uh, patent, all that sort of stuff, all the sort of selling out to corporate corporates and basically making them uh, impossible to regulate and all this sort of thing. Yeah, there's a lot of faults with the TPP, but in the end of the day, uh, I still think it's crazy to be in a country that's just walled off from trade. Um, as Japan is, uh, and, and, and the way that it distorts the market here, and it affects the quality of life of people. I mean, you know, as consumers anyway, uh, maybe not the best, but uh, anyway, PPA people will, will die off soon. That's what this will do, and that's why Pico Taras is trying to make all the money he can. The death note thing of PPA people is also awesome. You see, uh, give me anything about Japan, I can talk about it uh, as long as you want. And cold, I don't like you saying that because that implies. Uh, which no, I don't want people putting pens in me. So uh, I appreciate the sentiment, but not going there. Um, so uh, yes, yes, uh, we got love hotels. This uh, this is actually uh, immediately when Pokemon Go came out in Japan. You know, in Tokyo, everyone walks. Most people don't have cars, so that's kind of fine. The worst you have is people obnoxiously bumping into people. But in most of Japan, like in Australia or America, people drive around in cars. And there were a lot of people, I remember uh, Michaela actually even was tweeting about she saw people driving cars where they were clearly playing Pokemon Go while driving and how dangerous it was. And there are now been cases where people have been distracted from dri while driving playing Pokemon Go and they've run over some kids. The parents have, uh, have asked that uh, the app be disa disabled while people are driving. And in this kind of heightened attention, uh, you know, period where people are still playing this, maybe Japan is the only place where people are still playing this. Um, but where it is resulting in negligent driving and fatalities, um, this person, apparently a driver of a tour bus, was driving the tour bus while playing, and pa apparently kind of very proactively playing. Hey, you still Trooper 109? It's going great. Was playing um, Pokemon Go, and so this is heightening the debate about, uh, yeah, you know, it's irresponsible. People have been getting killed, um, and the game maker probably needs to find a way to detect if... Um, if they're in a car that's moving, you know, i.e. probably by the speed. I mean, anything that's above, you know, frankly, walk, run, running speed, they should probably disable the app, you know, which is a pain. You know, and a lot of people are arguing back and saying, well, if you do that, then the Japanese threads debating this is saying, wasn't it the same as having a car navigation system that detracts your, you know, you use that while driving, it's a screen. Uh, what about car stereos? That distracts. What about car phones? Those distract. Why is everyone focusing on Pokemon Go? But, but the thing is, is that people are clearly actually proactively using you know uh, their phones like it's I would say this is probably worse than texting 
uh, or at least it's on a similar level too so yeah a uh, question there from James what do I think of non-native Japanese people teaching Japanese to foreigners in Japan uh, okay so you're talking about someone like me teaching Japanese to foreigners in Japan I don't think there's anything wrong with it the same as um, I don't think there's anything wrong with um, when I learned Japanese in New Zealand half of my professors were non-Japanese the advantage of having a non-Japanese teacher is that they tend to understand the learning process and the struggle and the, the maybe the cultural differences they can understand the perspective if they're someone who shares your culture at the very least they'll share the perspective of learning Japanese as a, as a language as an adult um, which obviously Japanese don't necessarily have you know they, they will have other languages they will have English but the actual specific thing of learning not being Japanese and learning Japanese as an adult is a perspective that Japanese teachers don't have that foreign teachers have if they are westernized then that's another advantage the you know the, the struggles that we might have with uh, kanji the the tricks that westerners can use uh, that, that, that we tend to be better at so I think there are actual pluses to it um, that said you know my philosophy still is you should get as many good Japanese teachers as possible um, you know, um, you know, there are Japanese who have lived overseas too long, and they don't speak totally natural Japanese anymore either. Um, but no, I don't think there's anything wrong at all with non-Japanese teaching Japanese. In fact, I think there are positives to it. Although at the same time, I'd say you want both, um, and, and certainly for speaking and listening, you do want to be around native speakers as much as possible. I think the great the great thing about um, non-native uh, teachers is that at least they've done it. You know. Uh, and they can have empathy and understanding and maybe understand the, the, the learning process of fellow foreigners a bit better that's the upside I would say um, yeah nothing nothing against it at all if you ask me that question Jinx I hope that helped um, and by the way I still really think you should get like Pokemon built into things like these I mean I'm, I'm still waiting for uh, uh, Google Glass to come back an improved version no, I think that's the that's the case for you know this uh, sort of Pokemon Go augmented reality type stuff and HoloLens a HoloLens that you can walk around but is discreet enough that it's like this I mean that's that's the case right there right uh, what else we got here um, yeah they figured out what caused that 750 million dollar uh, launch pad explosion of SpaceX which was kind of a bummer for uh, Elon Musk and Facebook and so on and apparently it was to do with what was it to do with it was like a hydrogen link but it's never happened before it was something to do with the fuel tanks well now they know and uh, you know it's like airplanes they're going to make sure it doesn't happen again um, this is interesting the Ministry of Justice which also oversees the Immigration Ministry is going to be doing this first ever central government survey of discrimination against uh, foreigners in Japan uh, this is a significant uh, thing because um, the United Nations Commissioner on Racism and Human Rights, they come to Japan, and particularly the last one came to Japan, and went around the country hearing from different minority groups and so on, and hearing about the racism issues, and the government, uh, including Sanai Takaichi, um, refused to meet with him. Um, so they actually not only you know denied and, and were doing, not doing enough, but they actually like ignored the UN rep who came on it. Uh, and wanted to know, you know, what are you doing about these issues? Do you, are you even grasping these issues? And the answer is no, the Japanese government is not grasping these issues. So again, you know, you can rip on Abe all that you like. Frankly, this isn't Abe. This is the, the bureaucrats who run government who are the same no matter what the government is. And they are generally actually much more pragmatic and thoughtful than the politicians who are, you know, in temporarily sitting in the seats, you know, looking like they're in charge. But yeah, credit to the Ministry of Justice for doing the survey, assuming that they're going to do it right. And uh, again, this is, I think, building up to 2020 and looking to, um, I think, highlight issues that could cause embarrassment to Japan around the Olympics. And again, if all this is being because of the Olympics, I have my reservations with the Olympics that I've explained before. Uh, I, I think the money being spent on the Olympics should be spent on the recovery from the Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami and all that sort of stuff. But that said... Um, there are a lot of upsides for uh, being foreign in Japan and you know for, for us and this is one of those things so that is that is good um, Kim Jong-un has been loving all the, the crises that have been happening in Korea which I think I'll get a link on that uh, yeah they have pyramid schemes in Japan around uh, multi-level marketing schemes pyramid schemes uh, around uh, uh, cosmetics in Japan uh, those exist here as well uh, MLMs I think they're called the uh, Dentsu has uh, put in a hotline uh, for people uh, overworking <laughs> and some people there looking it's, it's very good publicity I guess uh, that's what Dentsu does isn't it um, yeah Dentsu is gonna, sorry Panasonic is going to be firing uh, 90 people domestically and uh, 2000 abroad this is to do with I think the shutting down of their panel operations their TV panel operations which is I've got to I've got to 
Panasonic Plasma TV and they're great so that's kind of sad to hear this is a video which I edited all on my iPhone and I thought this was like wow you can do all this cool stuff I didn't realize you can do on the iPhone now so that is awesome and this is a show from last night that you have to watch um, how to make a business in Japan both how to make a business and how to do it in Japan uh, there's Tia there and there's Rob and it was a really good show I thought it was actually like the most informative useful thing I've done on the internet like in years <laughs> serious sincerely Rob is an awesome guy he's very well prepared and he's actually got an online course version of the show that we did last night um, well worth checking out if you just you know just if you are motivated from the beginning of something that you'd love to do in Japan if you just want to break out of your nine to five you know working for a company um, here, here is a way that you can do it uh, not to, not just advice but you can actually go and he will actually coach you through and you can actually get him to be a consultant to help you set up your own company and he's done this for lots of people he's a cool guy doing a very cool thing and it was great to get that and share a bit of that knowledge on the show last night uh, yes galaxy washing machines have been blowing up and they're getting recalled as well it is kind of funny uh, in Japan people don't trust um, you always get the thing people ask how like why is it that Samsung you know products are not as popular in Japan as elsewhere like you don't see Hyundai cars you don't see Samsung the cheap washing machines so much you do see them and uh, you know it's true online people always say well the, everyone knows that the quality is shit and they're probably dangerous and most foreigners I know see that and they say oh it's Japanese being anti-Korean and race uh, you know anti and, and racist and there's probably a little bit of, uh, of that in there there's probably some prejudice but at the moment as you can imagine on the internet there's a lot of people feeling very vindicated and what may have been their racism but some people saying see it wasn't racism they really do make just shit stuff or they're, they're you know they're, they're slap dash it's not been a good few weeks of publicity for Korean made stuff which you know is, is maybe unfair because I mean I've got a Korean monitor an LG monitor right here and a Samsung monitor in front of me right here I hope it doesn't blow up that would be bad it's got no batteries in it so that's a good thing um, I use them but um, but you know it, it is true you, you pay this premium for Japanese stuff but you do get peace of mind you do get good servicing and you do get you know they, the stuff just does work better um, Korea is always marketed more for good products that are good enough that you know you can live with them and not having to pay double the price for a little bit of an extra premium but this is what you get with the with the Samsung stuff um, so yeah Dan search and out the lights at uh, 10 o'clock which uh, we'll see how that goes this is the thing I was mentioning earlier about prices just going crazy because of all the excessive rain and this is why the TPP I think is a good idea because we are just at the mercy of the weather and the farmers and all that sort of stuff that is me setting up the live stream last night uh, and not realizing that the speakers weren't set up and weren't working that was, uh, was a slight error of judgment um, uh, before the game uh, Ireland uh, versus New Zealand uh, which Ireland deservedly won uh, this morning there was a comment that almost no one in Chicago knew about or was focused on the fact that we had this huge test match that was being played in Chicago because of the Cubs win but I think you know this is actually great publicity for the sport the fact that it's kind of matched this Cubs win in a way I mean it's 111 years Ireland never beat us once and this is including the last time that we played Ireland we only beat them two minutes into extra time you know like it was a desperate last minute that we flipped the game on them and that does start to make it look like you know a curse but well done well done Ireland the standing rock thing I have been following uh, on Facebook people might have noticed I've been posting a little bit about it it is insane to me this whole thing with Standing Rock um, to be clear people get a lot of people protesting for a lot of different reasons um, I don't give a shit about the pipeline I really don't um, pipelines are everywhere and yeah they're there you know um, they, they promote use of fossil fuels they you know there's all sorts of things that are wrong with them um, what is it? There's the fossil fuels, there's the um, the, the economic greed and all the, the capitalism and big business and all this sort of stuff. But remember, this is being built by the Federal uh, Engineer, U.S. Army Engineers Corps. Uh, in this particular case, this issue is about building that pipeline over federally, federal land, basically, on, a, on an Indian reservation, but federal land. So this isn't, a, you know, although there's, there's corporate greed involved, to me this isn't a capitalism issue, this is an issue of just really shitty judgment by the US federal government, and where I, when I look at America from the outside, and someone who's interested, because in New Zealand we are very similar as Canada and Australia do, we have these indigenous rights and indigenous land rights issues, and they're, they're very fundamental to what it is to be a New Zealander, to understand this, um, you know it's, it's, a, it's an important part of our history 
correcting the wrongs of how we've uh, basically taken a lot of Maori land in New Zealand. And I know America is struggling with the same thing. And these federal these reservations, I understand, are a, a way that, of addressing that. These independent sovereignties, in this case for the Sioux Nation, the fact that uh, you know what we are seeing a pepper spray dogs people clubbing unarmed you know protesters in, in in kumbaya circles and stuff like that um the images that are coming out of these protests the, these are peaceful protests and these people are getting treated like like people in civil rights demonstrations in the far south of america in the 1950s the images that are coming out at best it looks like um, you know, Alabama, Mississippi civil rights process, uh, protests. At worst, it looks like the federal government going rounding up and shooting Indians like they did in the 19th century. And this is happening under a federal government uh, being headed up by President Obama. Uh, it's shocking to me that. Uh, and the thing was, during the civil rights movement, it was the federal government that would send in the, the, the you know the federal troops to actually enforce you know desegregation and so on. Um, it was always, you know, it was the states, it was the federal government imposing this on the states and standing up for civil rights. And here you have a case here with very similar sort of issues, and it's the, it's the, it's on the watch of the federal government, it's a federal pipeline on federal land, and there are dogs and clubbing, and this is, this is, you know, being, this is all under Obama's control. Uh, which is why it's good to see that he has apparently uh, decided that they're going to re change the course to avoid going through these uh, Indian burial grounds, which for all sorts of reasons seems like a good idea. How are, how are the first black president of America could be overseeing America acting like bloody Goldwater, <laughs> clubbing, clubbing indigenous Americans, protecting their, 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 their burial grounds, you know, on, on Indian land, uh, indigenous Native American land, you know, it's just crazy to me. The whole, the whole situation is, is completely ridiculous. And this is the thing, we're all afraid of how bad Trump is going to be or, you know, how illiberal some people are. But this is a completely unacceptable situation, so that's why it's been uh, drawing my attention. That big DDoS attack was probably done by kids. Well, that's good to know, isn't it? Um, the cool space stuff and virtual reality stuff. Damn it, damn it, these things, it's driving me crazy because I don't like the lightning headphone connector. Um, uh, uh, Mata Gajinka, yeah, sure, it's not, well, and, you know, it's not just. Uh, Advice uh, that, that was a uh, link, you know, you've seen I've posted other stuff on Facebook. To me, it is just the issue. It's it's the fact that this is that they put this pipeline through this uh, sovereign, you know, reservation land. And I understand they're private, they're private security contractors that are uh, uh, battening and tear gassing and putting dogs on these protesters. I also understand that you know I, I do understand that there there are other dynamics to this, but still I think in principle what is happening is just ridiculous uh, on that thing. Yeah. These things is driving me cra back to first world problems, right? I I, I want to get these just because I don't like the fact that when I'm listening to something and I see my battery is going dead. I have to not listen. I can't watch a video. I can't listen to music if I have to charge my iPhone 7. And the, the headphones, they suck. If you just bump them, it cuts out. Or it will pause or do something else. So, no, I want these things as soon as possible. And they're delayed. Uh, but apart from that, you know, the um, I do like the iPhone 7 overall. I, I love the Apple Pay, uh, the Suka, the, you know, all that sort of stuff. But damn, these things are just, you know, sucking. Um, the Tesla battery, you, yeah, you don't want to be in a car crash in a Tesla because those little batteries, they turn into uh, rockets. Uh, that's not a good thing. Um, I think it's awesome that the, the that the Back to the Future script is playing out, at least with regards to the Cubs winning. Hopefully not with Biff Tannen becoming president, but we'll see about that. Um, this is what I was talking about, the vegetables. This is why I want the TPP. It's crazy. There's too much rain, the food prices go up, and the city of Mir is cancelling school lunches. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You know, it's for a limited time or whatever, but th this should never happen. Uh, now, now he, I'm sympathetic to the point, to the extent that, yeah, you know, taking that space out to use for other things on the phone. Uh, if taking that headphone jack out enabled uh, Apple Pay and Suka, then I'm kind of cool with it in that regard. And if I can get good enough Bluetooth phones, uh, I can also be good with it. But, you know, again, you have to have the solution. You can't just take it out and not have the solution. And, and those iPad, those AirPods getting delayed is just, you know, uh, yeah. Um, so what have we got here? 
Yeah, Hillary Clinton's private mail. She apparently, well, you know, I, I've always seen her as being more pro-China than, than Japan. She's, again, famously uh, castrated uh, Prime Minister uh, Hatoyama when he tried challenging her on uh, US bases in Okinawa. Um, yeah, the Clintons have always been kind of, you know, they, they would always fly over and skip visiting Japan and go straight to China and come back and they're very proactively uh, telling Japan, including uh, Clinton raised the specter of uh, sanctions on Japan over whaling, um, which again, he might be right about, might be wrong about, but the point is, is that they're not, they're not exactly, you know, as Democrats in general are not, I mean, Obama again skipped taking, uh, Shinzo Abe out for dinner, um, did not skip taking President Xi. Uh, out to dinner, you know, Democrats are generally not the friendliest people towards Japan, even though most Americans in Japan are definitely pro-Democrat. I find that an interesting thing constantly. You know, I, I still think it's the only choice that exists in the election, even though I'm sure that she's probably, well, I'm positive that she's lying. She's lying about, she's not going to roll back the TPP and all this, and I rely on her being a liar, actually. But this is kind of why you uh, you know, it really, are these the best candidates that could come out? But uh, it is interesting just for the perspective of the uh, the in impact of everything. Um, yes, I posted this because um, this is when President Park, when she was apologizing for being controlled by a cult. Have you guys heard about this, by the way? She was being controlled by a cult that said that they were communing with her assassinated uh, mother. And she, uh, according to what most people seem to believe in South Korea, the president of South Korea basically fell under... Um, virtual mind control of uh, this cult leader and uh, when he died his daughter became sort of her best friend and when she was sort of apologizing for allowing herself to be controlled and manipulated by this religious cult and this woman she did the speech talking about how she was such a lonely uh, orphan and you know how she's uh, basically appealing to pity in her apology her approval ratings have gone down to five percent the most unpopular, in a long line of very unpopular prime ministers in Japan, the most unpopular prime minister ever in Japan is the current head of the IOC, or JOC, um, uh, Yoshi, Yoshiro Mori. And he went down to like 9% at the very worst point. She's down to 5%. And when she was apologizing for all this trouble that she's caused, she basically said that she's so lonely. Uh, she's so lonely. She's lonely and being all alone. She's so lonely, just her only, just sitting on her little throne, uh, pretty, pretty much. I mean, the, the lyrics match, it's the wrong career, but honestly, who can tell the difference anymore half the time? Um, so, yeah, South Korea is really going to hell, and uh, I was actually going to go and have lunch. At um, <laughs> some point, I will get to actually meet fellow Kiwi. Uh, we've, we've had some fun Twitter exchanges. But again, uh, this sort of stuff, uh, Korea is going crazy at the moment, so she was flying off and discovering all of that. It is a bizarre scandal, and frankly... I'm kind of like, really? I, and apparently there was an equivalent to this in America as well. But um, the, the, the degree of control and scariness of this religious cult that's involved um, and, and the way it translated to nepotism and so on and indirect corruption and embezzlement, all of those things have all sort of combined that, you know, people want her to get rid of her now. And I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, what is it with South Korean presidents? And the worst thing is, from a purely selfish Japan perspective, whenever... Um, Japan, Korean presidents go into the crapper as every single one has almost always related to corruption um, they, they, they try to desperately get back public favor by basically bashing on Japan um, and that's what happened with the last president President Lee who was probably the most pro-Japan most Japan friendly president that Korea's had uh, in 20 years uh, even Kim Dae-jun who was actually saved uh, from assassination by Japanese by when he was uh, living in uh, in hiding in Japan. Uh, everyone turns to bashing on Japan when things get tough, and I'm afraid that's what's going to happen now. But, you know, Korea's got issues. Uh, what can we say? Um, this is the thing on survey on racial discrimination. It's good to see that they're paying attention. Um, some date simulations are not going to be made available uh, outside of... Uh, <laughs> outside of uh, Japan on uh, PlayStation VR. Uh, probably a big disappointment if you are into that sort of thing, but uh, I don't really know about that. Here's the recording of the washing machines. Um, a little Alexa thing. I've got an Alexa tap, which I play around with at work. They're not very Japan friendly yet, but they are, they are cool to play with. The Supermoon. I took a photo of the Supermoon. It wasn't a very good photo. But uh, yes, uh, two nights ago at the moment, the moon is like the, the closest it's going to be for like 30 years or something. That's pretty cool. Uh, population growth is kind of crazy. Will there ever be a Japan Japanese female prime minister? Yes, there will. There are actually a lot of Japanese women in uh, 
And actually, they've always been, uh, at least at the top of parties, maybe overall, the overall numbers of politicians, the, the rate of women are quite low, but there are a lot of women, particularly on the left wing, but even in the right wing now as well. I mean, Abe has like four or five women in his cabinet. And, you know, they, they are nuts as far as I'm concerned. Some of the worst people in his cabinet are some of the women there, but, you know, he's put the Minister of Defence. Uh, minister of you know a, a lot of really key positions, so I, I I think it is just a matter of time. And in fact, I'm I would also go so far as to predict that um, I really like the Medi one. That yeah, again, corruption and had to resign. But there was talk about you know uh, Abe was probably looking to groom a, a successor as a female prime minister. I think that would be a nice line under a, you know a very long tenure as prime minister that if he was able to hand, hand over to the next uh, person being a, a female prime minister. I think it's going to happen. Um, yeah, China turns its firepower on rugby. It would be good to see Japan getting into, uh, China getting into rugby. Here's the thing about the, the, the truck driver. Uh, different motivations for gaming by different nationalities, Korea, Japan, China, and America. Um, Americans play for fun. Jap what is it? So what is the, the comic here? It's an interesting one. Rocket News. Will it display? If it won't, I'll skip it because I can't remember it. Oh, it's not showing up. But something like, yeah, um, Japanese like collecting, Americans like doing it for fun, Koreans like to clear different levels, and Chinese just love to beat people, apparently. Stereotypes there, aren't they fun? Uh, the Mega Drive is coming back. What have we got here? Um, well, this is kind of cool. So, uh, Japanese singles, they do these surveys, surveys of uh, what, what type of company would you like the person uh, who you were dating for to, to be at. So, ninth place is uh, Amazon and uh, Mitsubishi Tokyo UFJ Bank. So, a big bank or, you know, kind of flashy IT company. Uh, Japan Airlines uh, is number eight. Uh, that's pretty common that you have the airline companies. They get great pay, great perks. Um, they're generally quite good looking, uh, you know, and I guess this goes both ways. Toyota, good solid company, I guess. Uh, local civil servants, civil servants get great vacations, great pay, they're very highly respected. All Nippon Airways, the classy private version of Anna, which is kind of the government, the government version. Um, Nintendo, that's an interesting one. Well, it's Kyoto, it's public, but it still is, you know, internet sort of space. It is interesting, Google's not on this list. Google was on this list for a long time. Oh, Google is there, sorry. Google and Apple are tied at six, I skipped over that. Uh, I thought they were on there. Um, then it surprised you, maybe Facebook isn't on here. But national level civil servant, yeah, getting great pay, still the most desired. They get, they get practically free housing in great neighborhoods and so on. Good vacations, good pay. Um, they're very smart people, so yeah, that's how Japanese people look at people who are desirable from a perspective of, uh, of dating and where they work. Uh, coffee shop, uh, filmmakers arrested, 360 uh, cameras, Takada's going uh, insolvent. Uh, YouTube comment moderation tools have been improved. There's going to be a whole lot of stuff where you'll be able to actually put in keywords that will automatically moderate certain sort of terms, which I think for a lot of particularly female YouTubers uh, out there who have to put up with a lot of uh, harassment and abuse and so on, that this will give them a lot more powerful tools for managing their comments. Um, yeah, YouTube's going to ha host a $100,000 gaming tournament. That's pretty cool. Um, again, this is just this, these images that the fact that it's coming to this and standing rock is just insane to me. Again, I know it's vice, but still. Um, uh, what else we got? This Jesus is only a day back, so let's just go back really fast because I want to wrap it up soon. We'll see if there's anything else that's really significant. Here is the YouTube blog, by the way. And you can these these are all on my Twitter. If you follow my Twitter, you can find all of these links if you want to read up on any of these things yourself. Um, but there are the YouTube tools, the announcement of that. Taka does declaring insolvency to avoid probably having to pay on lawsuits. Uh, virtual reality uh, football, uh, American football games are starting. Um, Japanese banks adding foreign language service, uh, services. Uh, again, kind of amazing. Um, Twitch is interesting to me just because it's good competition for YouTube and it's good that they're bringing out lots of uh, these extra things. Uh, extra features. Vimeo is looking to subs uh, launch a subscription video service for its viewers. Um, which I guess is good, they're sort of the, the classy, artsy version of YouTube. Um, what else we got here? Shibuya Halloween uh, by Shivers, she is awesome, so nice to see that. Uh, more control over comments again. Uh, Korea is in the crapper, what else is happening? Uh, no confidence. <laughs> uh, again, more explanation about the Korean issue. Uh, Japanese uh, high schools and sex education. Um, or, or lack thereof, uh, Densu uh, working to death uh, thing, 
what else have we got here? Uh, service overtime. I I tweeted a little bit about the service overtime is when you work but you voluntarily do not claim overtime that you do. Uh, it can be pressured. You can be pressured uh, to do it, and it's customary. Actually, one of the companies I worked at that uh, you wouldn't put in for overtime unless you did at least two hours first. You wouldn't put in if you were only thirty minutes. If basically, if you'd work until six p.m., um, no one would put on their time entry that they went home at six o'clock. Even if they were there till six forty-five or seven o'clock, they wouldn't actually claim overtime unless they worked past eight o'clock. So if you worked until seven thirty, you'd put in that you went home at eight six o'clock. But if you work until 8 o'clock, then you put in 8 o'clock. Um, it was kind of a voluntary, and, and what I, I challenged my boss on it when he said, because he said, dude, you, you're putting in time, no one does that. And I said, well, but if I'm doing the time, can't I just put it in? And he said, well, no, you know, you do lots of things. You go to the toilet, you, you know, do preparation, you do all this other, you should be studying as well, all this sort of stuff, which, um, you know, isn't company time. So uh, you need to cut that out. So we won't recognize it unless you get, go to two hours. I, I said to my boss, okay, so just to be clear, I mean, I'll, that's fine, I'll do it, but what you're telling me is that you want me to make those two hours, the first two hours, like service overtime, right? And he gave me this dirty look. Uh, but that was what he was asking, you know, all I did was say it out loud to him. I was showing a bad attitude about it, but you know, that's pretty common stuff in Japan. Um, yeah, it is eight day, you know, you certainly don't show up. I, I would show up at, at right before nine o'clock and people, you know, you have to show up at least 8.30 maybe, you know, reasonably before, and uh, definitely 8 o'clock for going home unless you've got a good reason, in which case you have to apologize and get permission in advance. Interesting, uh, no matter how bad it looks in Korea, uh, the, the current president of France is even less, he's got an approval rating of 4%, which is kind of, again, incredible. Uh, what else is going on? Just Korea in the crap of Michael J. Fox congratulating the Cubs. That was a great game to watch. I mean, I'm not a baseball fan, but that was a great game to follow. Um, the, the harshness of being a single mother in Japan, you know, how tough it is to sort of make a living on the, the wages a lot of working mums have to uh, have. Um, again, a lot of talk about Korea, a lot of talk about Halloween, Tokyo, which was uh, looks like it was very cool. Um, this very dodgy column from Gaijin Pot that I find very awkward and cringy to follow, but uh, time for bed, I know it's time for bed. Um, but yes, uh, ask Sarah, it's interesting anyway, just seeing the advice that's there. I don't necessarily agree with the whole thing there, but uh, what it's like being an Asian Gaijin in Japan, a little blog there from Gaijin Pod, at least as a, I think as a Chinese, Chinese background person, someone who doesn't stand out immediately as being a, a foreigner. Um, yes, Obama fixing that whole stupid thing about their reservation. Uh, Odaiba, that was pretty cool. Um, the baseball thing I found was incredible. The first uh, Karoshi white paper. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's been lots of cool news this week. Uh, follow follow my Twitter. It's all on my Twitter, and I share this with my opinions about these things. I kind of like this filter I made a, a Instagram video with. Uh, and yeah, so I hope you found that interesting. I am, I am making more music again. Uh, definitely follow the Tokyo Digital crew and uh, support their music making. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, uh, if you want to stay in, t in touch with what's on Japan, you can ask me questions anytime. You can definitely follow the show. It's very good to see all of you guys. It's good to be back. And uh, it is past my bedtime, so uh, I guess I'm going to be rocking out. I hope you guys all have a good night. And uh, yes, have a good night, everybody. See you again next week. Uh, two and a half weeks, she's will be back here next Saturday. Took your time tonight, it's here every Sunday. And uh, November 27, mark it in your calendars if you can make it to Tokyo. If you can uh, join for the Creator Day, go register. Link is below in the video. Um, so, yes, have a good night, everybody, and boom, peace. Can't believe I talked for 15 minutes thinking it was recording when it wasn't. That was, that was awkward. That was awkward. Well, good night now.